let's talk about how to build a second brain in our notes. Now, what you're looking at currently is my own second brain within Reflect. So if I zoom in here, you can see that these are all of my notes with lines connecting them. And those are just links connecting them to each other. And this effectively just builds up a map of my thoughts and ideas over time. And as I continue to use it and add to it, it just becomes more and more valuable. Now, the concept of building a second brain was popularized recently by Tiago Forte in his book, Building a Second Brain. So what I've done is I've taken some of the key concepts from his book, distilled them here, and we're going to talk about how to apply them in your own notes. So let's start off with developing a habit of capturing information. These are going to be any ideas, thoughts, useful information you encounter, pretty much everything. And there's a couple things that you can do to make developing this habit easier. For one, you need to make sure your notes are very, very accessible. So that might mean making sure it has an available app on all of your devices so that you can quickly record notes on your mobile and your computer. And you know that they're always the same and in sync. Solid offline experience is an important one to me because I'm oftentimes out of Wi-Fi or cell phone service, and I still want to be able to capture and recall the thoughts and ideas I've had. And some simple features like pinning notes, for example, on the side here, I've got the important ones that I use every day pinned so that I can access them quickly. And thankfully, with the advent of AI and some things like Whisper, we can now do very convenient thought capture methods like uh, transcribing voice notes. So you see that here in the top left hand corner of Reflect, I can just record a voice note here. I can also do it on my mobile phone. I think this has been probably the most impactful thing for me in being able to capture information more easily. And by using things like the GPT-4 AI assistant, you can take those voice notes and transform them into things. And I'll kind of go into that a little bit more later. And lastly, I think it's very helpful to just get in the habit of doing daily mind dumps and doing logs of your day within your notes. Once you start doing this every day and you start doing a couple of practices that I'll also mention in a moment, like backlinking and tagging, you'll notice that developing a second brain just sort of happens over time. You don't really need to do anything specific for it. So that's the first step is developing a habit of capturing information. Now, kind of next out from that is developing categories of capture. So this is going to be effectively the system that you use for organizing the information. And you're going to want to create specific workflows that allow you to easily capture those things. So one category might be important learnings from things you read, like books or articles. And in fact, it doesn't even have to be anything you read. Maybe it's a system for anything that you're learning, and it could include YouTube videos. It could include tweets that you find interesting. But whatever information that you find yourself regularly capturing or finding interest in, make sure you have a way to quickly save that information. Now, a very, very easy way to do that is with tags. And again, I'm going to go over that in a second. But for each of these categories, just jot them down and start to think through the system that you'll want to apply to make it easiest to capture that information. Okay, I think a really big one that everyone should do is have notes for ideas and mind dumps. So you see that's actually mind dump is the first note that I have pinned here. These are just places where you can go and start regurgitating information as quickly as you can without needing to worry about organizing it. And I think that is the key part for these idea sheets and the mind dumps. You don't have to worry about how good or how organized the information you're putting in. All you have to worry about is that you are in fact capturing it. Now, a really big one that I want to talk about that makes all of this easier is the daily note format. So if I click on daily notes here within Reflect, you see my daily note for today. And it's got all of the tasks that I want to accomplish. And I've even got categories for side projects. I do my daily reflections. I've got my weekly reflection in here because it's Monday. So all of these things you can kind of capture. And if you want to start by doing a daily log, you can put that in here as well. So even if you use a note taking app that doesn't have a daily note format, create an ongoing daily note and then just start a new header like this for each day and put the day of the week and the date so that you can uh, start building this up over time. All right. And then lastly, just kind of note down anything else you think of. If you run into categories where you're like, boy, I, I sure am wanting to put a lot of things in here, just develop a new note and pin it. So that could be a project. It could be an area of your life you care a lot about. 
whenever you start to notice that you want to be regularly saving information to a certain category, just create a workflow that makes it easier to capture. All right, now this is probably obvious after what we've discussed so far, but start with an attitude of abundance when it comes to capturing things. So don't worry about filtering things out. Don't worry about making sure things are a certain level of importance. Just try and capture everything. And again, this is what makes voice notes quite convenient is you can just kind of ramble and you capture all the information and then you can use these new AI tools to organize it later. And this whole attitude is in contrast to what's traditionally been kind of seen as like the selective form of note taking, which is, I think we all probably learned this in school where you, you only want to capture the important things. And so. It makes it quite stressful and quite difficult to take notes because if you're reading a book or listening to a lecture, you just are thinking about what you should be capturing and what you shouldn't be capturing. And in that process, we tend to lose the importance and the things that should be captured that we don't yet know should be captured because we're learning it in real time. So design your notes for action in this way. And that means you'll want to take things after you've captured it and summarize it, extract the insights, uh, identify the future actions and key takeaways, all of that good stuff. These are all things that you can deal with after capturing it. And again, this is what AI is very, very good for. So if I wanted to, I could select this note and take all of these notes and pull up the AI assistant and I could have it, you know, turn it into an article outline. I could have it write a blog post. I could have it reformat. And these notes here are already organized. Usually it goes in the reverse direction where you might just get a large paragraph of text that you have either typed out or done a voice note from, and you're going to use the AI to parse that into key takeaways, into short or long summaries, action points, all of that good stuff. So utilize these new tools. It makes building a second brain much easier. Okay, so let's move on to idea recycling. This is making sure that your notes are easy to index and recall, effectively organization. And the aim here is just to build a system that's going to allow you to recycle and repurpose your ideas. And this kind of comes back to the concept of how our brains work by forming associations. That's how our memory works. And our notes should work in the same way, basically as an extension of our brain. So in some sense, we're not really building a second brain. We're just building an extension of our own brains because while our brains are very, very good at forming ideas and making connections, it's very poor at storing them. And when we fail to store these things, we not only lose that specific association, but we lose all future associations that could be made and built off of it. So we want to make sure that it is easy to recall these things and that our notes are organized in a way that encourages that. And there's two main methods that we can use to help this. So the first is the most important, and that is backlinking. And backlinking is what is going to be helpful in forming that mind that I started off by showing you. And so in general, you're going to want to backlink all entities. So that could be people, places, things, locations, projects, all of that good stuff. These are going to be things that you want to backlink. And a good rule of thumb is to look for things with a capital that you would capitalize. Those are the typically the things that you're going to want to backlink. So if I am, let's say, going back to my daily notes here, I have a backlink for Reflect, which is a company that I'm doing work for. I also have backlinks here for my daily and weekly reflections. So I can go into those notes and see all of the days that I've done those reflections and I can go back and see what I was reflecting on on any given moment in time. Similarly, if I had meetings today with people, I would want to create a backlinked note for that meeting as well as that person. And that is what is going to build up this the connections in the second brain over time. And that's something that's gotten much better recently with the advent of backlinking within digital note taking. It's much better than creating, you know, physical notes and cards that reference each other. It makes it much easier to recall and index later on. Now, the second way is to create categories. So if I go into my all notes page here, I can click on these tabs at the top. And I can see a list of all the books that I've saved, or I can see the links that I've saved here, or the people that's my personal CRM. And I can also create any tags that I want here. So 
if I go down here, I've got a recipe tag and I can click on this and I effectively have my personal cookbook. So think of tags as categories, anything that you might want to pull out a list of your notes for. So again, a list of books, that's your own personal library, a list of people, that's your own personal CRM. Uh, I also have some tags for, uh, uh, you know, companies, that's my directory articles. Those are ones that I'm currently writing. Uh, I just recently started growth notes. So things that I'm saving just for my own personal education within growth and marketing. You can really do anything you want. And if you find yourself wanting to pull up a list of notes for a certain category, just create a tag for it and start organizing your notes like that. All right, so that's organization. So lastly, let's go to prioritization. Now, again, you're wanting to capture everything, but you don't want to keep reviewing all the information. So you're going to want to focus on things that are immediately relevant, actionable, and important. And you want to do that instead of trying to plan far ahead and kind of uh, making up some prediction engine on what's going to be important later. Focus on what's important right now. So to take that uh, through as an example, if you're doing a mind dump, do the entire mind dump and list every single thing you can think of that's on your mind. And then once you're done with that and you feel comfortable that you haven't been able to do anything else, go back through and prioritize those. List them from most important to least important. And again, this is going to make your notes just significantly easier to work with. And you can actually quite see how this will help your brain over time. Because if I do a mind dump on the most important things in the month, then I can reference that mind dump each week to figure out my weekly priorities. And each morning when I wake up and I'm developing my task list, I can look at the most important things for the week and so on and so forth. It creates a really, really nice system of organization both for your tasks and your priorities. But it's also very important when it comes to building the second brain, because again, we're capturing everything, but only the important things are readily available at the top of mind. So if we ever needed to find that niche piece of information that happened in a meeting two years ago, we can find it and it's there, but it's not going to be annoying us because all that we see in our note system are the important things and the top priorities that need to happen. So if you regularly do all of these things, I think the most important is starting the habit and then organizing them correctly with winks. You will find that you will form this map and this second brain quite naturally over time. And again, you won't just keep all these existing associations. You'll actually be able to form new ones over time that will continue to build the second brain.